Welcome to all of you listening in on our flagship station, Zoomer Radio AM 740 and 96.7 FM. Don't forget the FM transmitter here in Toronto. All of you listening to the live stream at zoomerradio.ca and on the Zoomer app and the Conspiracy Show app. However, and wherever you're listening, it is great to have you here. Uh, Dr. Elena Gabor, past life regression therapist, hypnosis instructor, uh, is standing by. She'll join us momentarily. Uh, and she's also on the HOA. And she'll talk about ethereal science, which is shedding new light on the, the mysteries of consciousness, life and death, and uh, the underlying causes of many physical and mental conditions. And she's going to detail some amazing information she's accessed by connecting with higher levels of consciousness and the universal mind. Um, um, you know, I have stated many times on the program, I have sort of our cards on the table, full disclosure, I, um, I don't subscribe to the notion of reincarnation. However, having said that, I have witnessed numerous past life regressions in person. Up close and personal, I have seen remarkable things. I cannot explain. I maintain an open mind. Uh, and whether or not you believe in reincarnation, the the theory behind past life regression is quite remarkable, and it's becoming increasingly mainstream in the the um, the world of psychology, and it is being used on, uh, well, not just past life regression, but just hypnosis uh, to, again, access the subconscious mind, remove blockages, things like addictions, um, undiagnosed or um, sort of mysterious ailments and pains and, 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 and so forth. And to me, this is just a, a fascinating area, and I love to talk about it. And uh, I am very pleased, again, to welcome back to the program uh, Dr. Elena Gabor, who is a, a practicing doctor, she, she was a practicing doctor of uh, dental medicine for about a decade uh, before she totally changed course, redirected her focus towards researching subconscious medicine, which is a fascinating field. And she's currently practicing medical hypnotherapy in Los Angeles and in Europe, helping thousands of people overcome their life and health challenges and to explore their immortality. She's the author of Home at the Tree of Life, an introduction to subconscious ethereal science. Elena, welcome back to The Conspiracy Show. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you for inviting me. My pleasure. Ethereal science, what is that? Uh, that's a, an interesting sort of field, but what does it mean exactly, ethereal science? It means the subconscious science. It means the science of the ethereal level of existence the level of existence we have as subconscious beings. And, I mean, what, what percentage, um, I mean, most of us, I, th I, I suspect, are walking around virtually asleep, and, uh, and a good friend of mine recently on the program, Dr. Cottrell, sort of mentioned, you know, the, uh, um, the, uh, the, the success of movie or TV series like The Walking Dead, you know, the zombie as a metaphor for the way most of us walk through life. I'm guessing that most of us are essentially asleep. Is that, is that a fair assessment? I would say so. In a sense, a lot of people are unaware of who they are, um, if they have or not other levels of consciousness who they are at those levels of consciousness, what abilities they have, what potential they have, and basically how, how sh they should and they could use their mind in their advantage. So, Unfortunately, we are not taught about this. We're not taught in school of how the mind works, what is the mind, what is consciousness, what is the brain. Uh, not even science knows very well, uh, not even scientists uh, uh, could uh, describe very well uh, what is the dynamic between consciousness and the mind. So uh, that's why I'm writing my second book about that, to clarify how we should use this whole system, mind, body, consciousness, in our advantage to have healthy, happy, and beautiful lives. Uh, and is it true, uh, Dr. Gabor, that we, we forget nothing uh, that our subconscious mind 
stores every memory, every experience. It's all in there if we can only access it. Is that true? It is true that we do not forget anything, but everything is stored at the higher self level of consciousness, at the superconscious level, not at the subconscious level. There is a big difference between the superconscious and the subconscious in the sense that it's a different level of existence. It is the same consciousness but in a different state. You are the subconscious being in the body when you're incarnated or in the energy field when you extend from the body and you shift into the superconscious level of existence uh, when you cross beyond the light that people describe in near-death experiences, when you enter that pure positive state of existence, that um, infinite ultimate reality also originate from, which is basically our eternal home. And uh, we return there not only after we die, but every night when we go to sleep, or at least that's where we should go to cleanse our bodies, to recharge with positive energy and so on. Uh, so it's interesting that we, we talk about consciousness, um, but our conscious mind really is, as I, as I mentioned earlier, it, it's, it's the least conscious, it's the least awake. Correct, it's correct. The conscious mind, it's formed in this life is basically the programming humanity implants on you after you're born. Um, we are not born with a conscious mind. We are born with a subconscious which is already formed and your eternal consciousness. But after you are born, people provide you all sorts of information and some of the information is correct. It's positively oriented. It's in alignment with your higher consciousness. And a lot of other information is fear-based, limited, disempowering, negatively oriented. And that's how we form like two programs in the conscious mind, two conflicting programs that create confusion. And that's why uh, we may not be able to channel our own wisdom due to that conflict and confusion we create through the conscious mind with the higher levels of consciousness. Uh, you know, people go through years of, uh, of therapy, analysis, uh, Freudian analysis. Uh, people like Woody Allen, who's been in Freudian analysis for 50, 60 years, and I don't know about you, I don't see any improvement. He's <laughs> he would probably agree. Uh, and, and that may also be the source of his success. Uh, but uh, if you can, I mean, are there shortcuts? If you access the subconscious mind uh, with hypnosis, it would seem to me then that you could resolve, uh, you could do away with a lot of clinical analysis. I mean, why spend 50 years in analysis and talk therapy if you can access the root of the problem in the subconscious mind in a couple of sessions? Correct, correct. And um, research is, new research is showing how efficient hypnosis is and accessing the subconscious directly and helping resolve those problems at the subconscious level. But many people are unaware of this and many people don't know of how efficient hypnosis is and they don't take that route. One of my students uh, uh, who's a psychotherapist actually described the this, this hypnosis that I teach, the techniques that I teach to her seem to be the highway, the freeway, the highway. As opposed to psychotherapy, it's like taking streets with a lot of stops, a lot of turns. So I think that's a great analogy. Uh, with hypnosis, studies show that you get like 93% um, results in about six sessions as opposed to psychoanalysis that could take about 300 sessions to get 38 uh, percent results. And is it, uh, when we talk about regression therapy, um, are the root of all of our obstacles in life, let's call them obstacles, are they, are the majority of them, do you believe in a, or your experiences found all, all of them or most of them in a previous life or are they just as commonly in our 
in our present incarnations, but you know, way back, maybe in childhood. Yes, some of the challenges we are having originate from our childhood and our current life. And some, actually most of the challenges originate from other experiences we had as consciousness. If you would think, as a human being, you are shaped by all the experiences you have in this life, in childhood, in, in teenage years, in, in the rest of your life up to this point. But as a higher consciousness, you are shaped by all the experiences you had through all the lives and through all the experiences you went through as consciousness. I don't think I've ever asked you this, but why did you go from dental medicine into hypnosis? Because I got very much interested in this field. I read uh, about this. I heard really amazing transformations using some of these techniques used in hypnosis. So I felt very much attracted by this and I felt that this type of work could help people at deeper levels. Uh, give me a, an example, give us an example from the book At Home in the Tree of Life uh, because it's, uh, there's a series of case studies in the book um, where someone had a particular obstacle that was holding them back in life and then through past life regression they overcame that obstacle. Uh, I'm going to give you a different example than from the book because everyone can read the book and find out about that. I'm going to give you some new information. Um, I had a client, a nurse, who later became my student, who had a severe cough for five years, so a physical symptom, a physical condition. So um, she coughed very severely and very frequently about five minutes, every five minutes she was coughing and during my class I became very concerned for her health and well-being. I felt like she must have some serious pulmonary condition. She described to us that she has been to five specialists in five states for the last five years. So she had this for five years and it exhausted her. Unfortunately, they couldn't diagnose her uh, to give her a proper diagnosis and a proper treatment. Nothing has helped her. So we decided during our class to help her identify the root causes of this in the hope that she would overcome this problem. So as I guided her in hypnosis and instructed her to go to the root causes of, her, of, of this pulmonary condition, she accessed what appears to be a past life in which she was a young woman taking care of her younger siblings because her parents worked um, a lot and uh, she did that with a lot of love and after the siblings grew up and left the house she's supposed to get married but for some reason she was resistant to that her parents kept pushing her to the point that she couldn't take it anymore so she decided to commit suicide she decided to drink poison and to stage her death to help the parents not suffer so much uh, so she um, she brought a dead snake close to her body this happened in the 1800s so the moment she drank the po poison, she felt how the poison was burning her mouth and her throat. And the amazing thing happened after she came back from hypnosis and for the rest of the day, she didn't cough at all. Next week when she returned to the class, we noticed she did not cough at all. And it, it's been a year since that happened. And the cough is completely gone. So simply by reliving the episode from a previous yes. life, that resolves the issue. Yes, exactly. That cough was just a messenger, just a reminder to her that she had some issue. She, she had hold on to some disempowering beliefs, some disempowering feelings that led to her suicide. So she needed to review that whole situation to change her perspective 
to let go of those disempowering beliefs and feelings she carried over in this life, and then the messenger left. There was no need for the messenger wa when the message was received and the lesson was learned. Now, what about this argument, um, Dr. Gabor? The, 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 the brain is an incredible imagination factory. It's, it's, I mean, the movies that we make inside our heads at night when we sleep are far superior to anything that, uh, uh, you know, Stephen King or, you know, name your director uh, could ever put up there on the screen. J.J. Abrams for the Star Wars fans out there. Uh, is it not possible that what people are experiencing in a regression are in fact just the inner workings of the mind creating a metaphor? In other words, it's not an actual past life experience. It's some sort of a metaphor that is helping and, and it's just as effective as a past life experience. From psychotherapy, we know that only by accessing the real memory, the symptoms, are released. Through imagination you cannot do that. But again from another perspective, who cares if it's a past life or a figment of imagination or a metaphor from the higher self as long as in an hour the client was helped after five years of tremendous suffering and exhaustion and worry. Uh, all the family members were worried people could not step away from her, thought she must have some serious condition coughing like that. So it doesn't really matter in therapy. We're not here to, to discuss this concept, if it's true or not, or are there past lives or not. From my point of view, it doesn't really matter as long as the results are of this nature. I agree. Uh, does it make any difference, though, if the the patient doesn't believe in reincarnation, is that going to prevent them from having a successful regression? No, there are people that are more scientifically oriented and this concept of reincarnation can be very well explained in science terms. So they could be very much open to this even though they don't label it as past life regression or reincarnation. I have many clients that access um, such experiences without even realizing they were past lives or I labeled them past lives or other people labeled them past lives. And it was as helpful as for the other people who believe in reincarnation. Now the idea of, of recovered memories is very controversial. Um, it, uh, there was a time when I think it was even considered uh, in uh, you know trials and so forth. I mean, but it is fraught with complications. Where where are we at now in 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 terms of uh, recovered memories? I mean, do you think they should be used, for example, in criminal cases? Are they that reliable, or are they fraught with complications? Um, <clears throat> I would like to say that uh, when it comes to memory, our definition of memory, it's a little bit different than what those information um, really are, those experiences really are. How would you define memory, right? So is it memory, uh, the, the information stored in your mind of an event that you lived in this life, that could be considered a memory, right? But when it's about another life, it's not actually, when we do past life regression, we're not actually accessing a memory. We are accessing the life itself that is occurring simultaneously. So we're not really accessing any memories we're going directly into that parallel plane of existence in which that life happens right now because all experiences of consciousness are happening simultaneously and quantum physics is pointing that out now um, and uh, we're getting the information from there so it's not really memory. All right, um, I think I'm wrapping my head around that. It's that's kind of a, it's a difficult concept. Yes, the, these are very difficult concepts. When it comes to the subconscious universe, 
it's very different than our understanding of the physical world because it's an energetic world and we we don't know how exactly to to understand and and uh, analyze that and because uh, the term past lives is about a, is a bit of a misnomer because we are talking Correct. about living lives uh, simultaneously past present and future lives at the same time Correct. Correct. All it's right. The, well. the labeling is not really correct. Yes. Uh, give us another example, uh, either from the, the book or another case study of someone uh, undergoing a past life regression to solve a problem. Uh, I'm going to describe the um, case of uh, the main character of the book, Nia, who has absolutely amazing abilities of perception and connection with her higher levels of consciousness. Um, this um, lady came to me in Europe with um, with a severe case of depression, suicidal thoughts, um, anxiety, and um, fears, and exhaustion, and so on. All sorts of other challenges. And um, in her first session, she was able to access a life in which she was extremely happy for a while, a life that she lived with her spiritual guide um, who actually wanted to introduce uh, himself to her at the conscious level because at the subconscious level we are always with a spiritual guides together and um, by reviewing that happy time of her life, she was able to remember, she felt that happiness, so she was able to remember how it feels to be happy, because a depressed person feels really sad, functions from such a lower level of vibration and existence, so in this way, she was able to elevate his, her frequency and learn some, some lessons there as well. Then in the next session she accesses the root cause actually of her suicidal thoughts and depression that um, originated in another life. She lived as a lawyer in Yugoslavia in uh, uh, Croatia and um, uh, her, his wife died at birth and his wife was the only person he loved. My client as that lawyer loved in that existence. So the lesson there was you should love everyone in your life the way you love your wife. You should have unconditional love for yourself and for everyone. So <laughs> easier said than done. Uh, easier said than done. I mean, that is almost yes, the art of the impossible. Yes, practice. We all can get there. So um, the, after the first session, actually, her suicidal thoughts disappeared. After the session, the second session, her depression disappeared. It took a while until she became more positive in thinking because depression is the result of operating from disempowering, negatively oriented, fear-based beliefs. When we operate from ne that negative ego of the conscious mind, that that's like a viral mind. I call it a viral mind. Uh, all those beliefs are like the viruses in the computer. They act the same and they can crash your computer and that would describe the suicide. So session by session she was able to return to a state of happiness and joy that she never experienced in this life. At some point she told me, I feel that I would like to yell or, or 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 just shout shut out of how happy I am in this life right now uh, and it's all because of the drama of the negative thoughts she bought into she identified herself with that negative ego forgetting who she really is just like all of us she is an expression of the source of love the creative force of the universe and once you identify yourself with that then the program of thinking that you function from totally changes. Uh, if we think of um, our present incarnations uh, as a result of 
uh, you know, the cosmic laws of the universe and karma, and we bring, that's what survives uh, the various incarnations, our karma. Um, is it possible, though, that you have accumulated so much bad karma? Uh, let's say in a previous life you were a serial killer, and the time before that you were some other horrendous individual, and so you've built up so much negative energy, so much karma, that there's not really much you can do about it. There is always something you could do about it. And the new life you create at the higher level of consciousness, you create based on the things you would like to work on in that life. You do not bring all your issues with you in one life. So the way you create lives, it's, it's really amazing. It allows you to, to release those disempowering beliefs you carried from other lives in which you made really bad decisions. And you can actually relieve a life to redirect your energy through much better routes to reach to a different outcome. Therapist. All right. Dr. Elena Gabor is with us, joining us live from L.A. on the HOA. Poet didn't know it. Maybe I was Longfellow in a previous life. Uh, now, in terms of the people that we associate with in our day-to-day -day lives, uh, family members, co-workers. Uh, I'm under the, or operating under the understanding is that we tend to carry with us the same people from incarnation to incarnation. They may switch roles. So in this incarnation, Albert is my producer. In a previous lifetime, uh, maybe he was my brother, or maybe I was his pet dog, or I'm not trying to be facetious or flippant here. I mean, but is that how it works? Yes, it is, up to a certain level of evolution. But once you, be, you become a highly evolved soul, it doesn't really matter for you uh, who you incarnate with because they all souls are, from your point of view, just like you. They're your brothers and sisters and you treat them the same. So you treat everyone with unconditional love and with respect and you consider them uh, as your own equal. So you do not do that uh, so much as you did at the beginning of your incarnation when you felt more comfortable with certain souls. But if we're having relationship issues uh, with a co-worker, with a spouse, what have you. Um, again, is that rooted in a previous life in the sense that there is some re unresolved issue with Correct. that person in the previous life? And not only with that person, but uh, the relationship with that person is a mirror of the relationship with yourself. So it's always a work on yourself and the other people are just mirrors um, to reflect back to you what belief systems you have about yourself and about life that are not in alignment with your true nature and who you are as an eternal consciousness. I spoke with a, uh, another uh, past life regression therapist uh, some years ago and he had a, a case where a husband and wife were at each other hammer and tongs all the time. It was just a toxic relationship and they both underwent a regression and it turns out, according in this regression, um, that they had they were on opposite sides during the Civil War. One was with the Confederacy, one was with the Union, and at some point they actually engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat during the Civil War. What do you think of that? Is that just too fantastical, or is that possible? Yes, it is possible, and I actually encountered cases like that. For example, a client who had a very difficult relationship uh, with her boyfriend, uh, they were constantly breaking up and, and coming back together and then again breaking up and uh, it was such a difficult relationship and it lasted a few years to the point that she decided to actually meditate on it, to understand what is it about this that's creating so much suffering for both of them and she had really wonderful skills and uh, she was able to get in the state of hypnosis and see a past life in which she was a young woman probably living in France and uh, in the 1920s 
and uh, she was pregnant and was ready to leave. She had a suitcase, was ready to exit the house, and she heard footsteps coming to that room, and uh, it was her boyfriend in that life. Um, and um, they started to get into a fight when he realized she wants to leave him. And uh, he pushed her. She hit her head on the wooden part of the bed and died right there. And when he realized what he did, he shot himself. Wow. And after she saw this and reached a level of peace, with what happened and accepted what happened in that life and had unconditional love for herself, for the unborn baby, and for um, the, the, the boyfriend, the relationship in her current life got to a level of peace in the sense that they talk about this, they split up, and they never got together again. Why do we tend to attract the same kinds of people in relationships. Someone, you know, they, they go through a, a toxic relationship and they swear, that, you know, they're never going to go through that again, but then they end up attracting the same person, exactly. the same type of person. What, because why? It's because we're having the same toxic relationship with ourselves. The relationship with the, the, the people we attract in our lives and especially with the ones, the romantic relationships, are mirrors of the relationship with ourselves. When we are critical about ourselves, when we uh, attack ourselves with all sorts of negative thoughts and beliefs, when we hate ourselves, we dislike the way we look, we dislike the decisions we make and so on, when we do not accept ourselves and do not work uh, together in cooperation with all the levels of our consciousness, that relationship with ourselves is going to be mirrored back to us until we wake up and realize what we're doing to ourselves, make better choices, and then um, the relationship with the other people will improve. All right, this was a, a short segment. We have um, another segment awaiting on the other side. Dr. Elena Gabor, home at the Tree of Life. Dr. Elena Gabor is with us. How mainstream is this, uh, Dr. Gabor? I mean, do you foresee a time, for example, when, uh, for example, if you have a benefits package at your place of work, something like this might be covered? It may take a while, but I'm sure people will realize how efficient this technique is. It's not only a technique that could help overcome physical challenges, but it's also a self-discovery process. It allows you to learn more about yourself through this past life regression process. You get to re-experience life from the standpoint of other aspects of yourself which actually form your greater consciousness. So isn't that the purpose of life in a sense, to know it yourself, know thyself, right? So this is a wonderful process that could get you in that direction. And actually, through past life regression, you don't see only life uh, where you had really traumatic events that are actually influencing your, your current life, but you also see wonderful lives in, you, in which you did amazing to rediscover your skills, your talents, your abilities, your potential, to start having more confidence in yourself to realize this is who I am today too. That part, that aspect of myself is still me. I can do the same thing in this life. Uh, is there any danger uh, when experiencing a past life and if you were to re-experience a tragic, uh, or a painful death for example, uh, let's say you were you you died in a fire in a previous life. I mean, could that not be so traumatic as to cause some, uh, I don't know, psychic or uh, um, psychological trauma? The fact that you're reviewing that life says that you are actually experiencing that trauma at some level every day of your life. So facing your fears 
dealing with them and releasing all the negative feelings, the whatever trauma you've extracted from that situation helps you actually release and end that suffering. You suffer every single day because of that traumatic event that happened in the along the journey of your soul, just like you suffer every day from traumatic events that occurred in childhood, for example. And it's the same as in psychotherapy, just that you're not only addressing the events of this life, you're addressing events of other existences as well. If someone so there's no oh. side effect, there is no danger, because first of all, as long as you work with the light, as long as you connect with the higher levels of consciousness, so hypnosis is the state of connection with your higher self. So as long as you are in that state, in that state of connection, you are guided by your spiritual guides and protected at all times. They show you only the things they know for sure you can handle. They will never show you things that could have any negative impact on you. They are your spiritual teachers. They know you better than anyone, better than you know yourself. How precise? Most hypnotherapists use these techniques. Now, are there bad in uh, people with bad intentions? Well, there are people with bad intentions in all professions, I guess, right? Sure, absolutely. Uh, how precise is this in the sense, I mean, does it operate like a time machine where you can take someone or they can take themselves to a specific time and place, uh, or is it more sort of random, uh, like you spin the wheel and let's see where you end up in terms of a past life? I see. No, it's not random at all. This process is guided by the higher self. It's not the client who chooses what life to see because they really don't know their lives, their past lives. It's the higher self and the spiritual guides and masters that show to the subconscious self and the client is connected, the conscious mind of the client is connected with the subconscious mind and it perceives through the subconscious mind all the details that are important for them to understand in order to reframe that whole thing, change their perspective, extract only the good from that, and release all the negative feelings and beliefs. Uh, I, I can't tell you how, uh, over the years, you know, having witnessed so many of these, how tempted I am to to try it, but also conflicted at the same time, and that's just in a whole other another issue. But um, what I, I'd like to know what it is like for someone to undergo a past life regression. Is it like they find themselves in a movie? Uh, can they interact with their environment? Um, or are they simply getting fleeting glimpses of a previous life? Are they, are they getting smells, auditory? How does it work? First of all, I would love to take you, Richard, in, in a past life regression and after that for you to see how ridiculous that fear of this process was. And some people have the ability to connect very deeply with those events, to really like be there, feel everything, see everything through the eyes of that past self, hear everything as if they're there. They even speak from that perspective. They even speak as if they were those past versions of themselves. And other people don't have so strong abilities to connect. They receive information either as images, as thoughts, as feelings, but it works for all of them. It doesn't really matter to which channel you receive the information. What matters is for you to get the point to do that transformation. Uh, you mentioned uh, the people speaking uh, the way, for example, that that person did in a previous life. I witnessed a past life regression with a colleague in radio and he started to speak in a British accent. Uh, and it was a credible accent. It wasn't, you know, like, it wasn't like uh, um, Kevin Costner in Robin Hood. I mean, he did a, a, an excellent British accent. And he had knowledge of Northern England that he wouldn't have had. He, uh, so that was quite remarkable. 
Correct. A lot of people access information they have never thought of or read about or accessed in their current life, and they're extremely surprised that they know that, but it's a process of accessing information, actually. And even the scientists, for example, Nikola Tesla or Einstein, who were bringing so amazing information, they were doing the same thing. They were connecting with a higher self level of consciousness and access information from the uh, higher self. Not about past life, but not about past lives, but about the topics they were interested in. Actually, Nikola Tesla was saying exactly that thing: that he's a receptor, that he's receiving information from the source of knowledge. Could he have been receiving information from the future, as some have suggested with Tesla, because he was you know, seemingly light years ahead of his time? Nikola Tesla is a highly evolved soul. He was connecting with his higher self and accessing information for, from wherever he needed. So all of the information already exists whether in the universal mind, whether in all the other lives, the universal mind contains all the lives that already exist. So uh, tapping in the universal mind can provide any answer you have as long as you work on yourself to become a pure vessel to let go of that egoic programming that can interrupt the connection and can distort the information that comes from the higher self. What percentage of people cannot be hypnotized? Well, Richard, uh, aside from people that have psychological problems, severe conditions like um, people that I wouldn't work with, you know, from clear reasons, uh, other than that, all my clients were able to access past lives. They may have not been able to access from the first time, I work with them, I gave them recordings to practice at home, and then from the second sessions they were able to access. And not being able to access a past life and not wanting to access a past life, not believing in it and refusing the whole process, is, they're to totally different things. Everyone can access their higher self, everyone can get into the state of hypnosis, because actually the state of hypnosis is that state when you come from sleep before you become fully awake or when you go to sleep right before you fall asleep. So as long as you can fall asleep, then you can get into a state of hypnosis. And as long as you can get in a state of hypnosis, you can access and connect with your higher self. Are you able to do it remotely or do you have to be with the client uh, face to face? I don't have to be with a client. I have clients from all over the world and I'm so amazed by how deep they go even if we work through the phone or through Skype because actually even if they're next to me or somewhere else they close their eyes and just, they just listen to my guidance so it doesn't make any difference if I'm there or there's someone else can people, somewhere else all right and can can people eventually learn to do this to themselves or would they do they always need like, for example, if you wanted to undergo a past life regression to resolve some obstacle in your life, do you go to see somebody or can you do it to yourself? I could do it to myself and I, I, I did some self-past life regressions, but I prefer to, to have someone else work on me and um, I do it constantly with my students. The first client they work on is me. Is there a danger for some people that they turn this into sort of a form of escapism? It's like, well, let's find out who I was in a previous life. So it's not necessarily therapeutic. It's more just curiosity. Uh, I have not met people like that at all because seeing past lives teaches you really amazing values and teaches you to be balanced, and that would be... Um, a state in which you wouldn't be balanced. So, so they really take in all those lessons. They really incorporate them in the way they think at the conscious level as well as the subconscious level. 
All right, uh, Dr. Gabor, uh, leave us with a website and, if he, and, a, and a, f a phone number or what have you if people want to get a hold of you and, um, and undergo a past life regression. My phone number is 310-614-9919 and my website is dr from doctor and my last name, Gabor, G-A-B-O-R.com. D-R-G-A-B-O-R.com. All right. Well, as always, a real pleasure, and I thank you so much. I enjoyed this conversation, as always. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure, Richard. Thank you.